So about a week ago, I picked up the Pulse Rifle Infinite Pass. Now this was actually one of my favorite Pulse Rifles in year one of Destiny 2. It dropped in Curse of Osiris, and it was up there boys, like tied with Inaugural Address. I very much liked it. I felt that it was consistent, it was snappy, but simultaneously though, it was present in one of the more popular archetypes of Pulse Rifle at that time, and that is the lightweight archetype. When we think way back when, the popular Pulse Rifles of that time were things like Agenda, Nurgle, Nightshade, and then when Last Wish dropped, we got Pulse Rifles like Chattering Bone. All in all, I think one of the biggest contributing factors to why so many people like this archetype of Pulse Rifle was so many veteran players from Destiny 1 love Pulse Rifles like Hawksaw, or Cyrus PDX 45, or Blind Perdition. Top rated Pulse Rifles way, way back when, that did not necessarily boast the best time to kill value, but were known for their consistency. Today guys, we're going to take a look at Infinite Path. Yes, you can get this through the sundial. You can also get this as a time loss frame, although I believe the sundial is probably the fastest way to farm for this. We're going to go over a few rolls, and I was very flip floppy with this weapon. Originally, when I played with it, God, I thought it was terrible, guys. I took to Twitter. I was very upset. Infinite Pass has returned to us, and it's crap. How did this happen? Turns out it was my roll. Now, I've got many rolls here, but the roll that has stood out to me the most that has enabled this pulse rifle to battle out against many weapons in that mid-range is this roll right here that essentially fully maxes out that range stat. Now, it'd actually go further than this, say if I had a range masterwork instead of a stability masterwork, but from my experience, you want to have a range stat close to 60, as close as you can possibly get it. Now, this roll right here came with full bore for a very substantial buff there in range, accurized rounds, auto-loading holster, which is not the trade I would choose, but the final trait there is Eye of the Storm. The main thing to take away from this one guys was i was just experimenting with the consistency on this pulse rifle i went from using more stable rolls things loaded out in our stability stats things loaded out in recoil direction things that would obviously make this pulse rifle a more consistent pulse rifle the issue is is that i was running into damage fall off so severe that in many scenarios that optimal time to kill value of 0.87 seconds was never reached simply because of damage fall off which takes us to the optimal range here of something like infinite paths even this max range one and again it could stretch a little further if we had a range masterwork but everything else is pretty much loaded but infinite here is pretty much constricted to 35 meters or less now i know that may sound pretty good i guess in comparison to a hand cannon but understand in comparison to other pulse rifles that's not that good. When you take some of our aggressive pulse rifles, especially our aggressive burst pulse rifles, things like Sacred Provenance, those pulse rifles can reach all the way up to 42 to 43 meters. And some, if you had all the right stats with range finder, can reach up to 44 meters, which is kind of what's stacking itself against infinite paths here. You've got other pulse rifles that have not only a better time to kill value, but they also have more range. So what's the point here of using infinite paths in something like crucible honestly it's tough to say guys there's a reason why you don't see many nightshades chattering bone to me is still the best feeling lightweight pulse rifle in the game and despite this role being very solid and having consistency if you were going to use a pulse rifle i can name a number of different options outside of the lightweight archetype that would be hands down a better pulse with that being said though if you are married up to this pulse rifle let's talk about the god roll here the god roll to me guys yes still eye of the storm eye of the storm is still an excellent trade inside of pvp it does a fantastic job. Combine that with something like Moving Target, which is the Crucible perk combination here that Light GG has selected. A fantastic combo. Now, there's a lot of other ways you can go too. I've got a Demolitionist roll, which is not bad. I even have Demolitionist with Zim Moment, which definitely helps out with that stability. Nothing wrong with those things. Again, the major contributor to this Pulse Rifle being a contender in your loadout as a main weapon is that range stat. You gotta have something boost in that range. If not, a number of things boost in that range. So as important as these traits are, and yes, they definitely help your game out, that range stat is going to be the most vital thing. And then we're not even talking about console users because stability is such a major factor, which is why moving target with Zim Moment might actually be the more preferred option for console users. And I'm not overlooking Swashbuckler here, but this is a pulse rifle. 
So if you are running a melee build with this, it may be a little tougher to utilize. Not saying you can't do it. The problem is it's going to put this pulse rifle in very close quarter combat if you're looking to get that times five inside a crucible with whatever melee build you're trying to rock. And even though Infinite Pass has a 35 meter cutoff range, or technically 34, despite that, it's nowhere near the dominant weapon in force in close quarter combat. So just because I'm saying it's got a cutoff range at that point, don't think you're going to be able to dominate everything 35 meters and less. Technically speaking, my experience with this pulse rifle inside of PvP has been that it's great. Everything between 29 meters and 34 meters, which is a very small window. Yes, it can kill. 0.87 seconds, fantastic. But it's pretty much always going to take three bursts. Majority of those shots have to be crits. And on top of that, anything less than 29 meters, most hand cannons are going to eat you up with a TTK value faster than what you're rocking here on this lightweight pulse and anything outside of 34 meters you start to experience damage fall off to the point that every other pulse rifle outside of maybe the rapid fire pulse rifles will outdo you and even rapid fire pulse rifles might still outdo lightweights simply because they're so spammy and so forgiving that they're just going to spam you to death it doesn't really matter i think the role though moving target with zim moment or eye of the storm inside of crucible is going to be your best bet and after experience it inside of iron matter where light levels do play a role this pulse rifle hitting 25 per crit and 16 per body was hitting a little harder considering my light level and i got to experience this pulse rifle hitting somewhere around 26 per crit maybe even 27 per crit which actually pointed out to me that this pulse rifle and this entire lightweight archetype actually needs a buff nobody likes to talk about pulse rifle buffs but have you seen my sacred providence do you know how many people i can ruin with that pulse rifle i've got some god rolls boys they're so nasty i put them in a vault I don't even like people to see them. We talk about nasty around here. Some things are just too nasty. Too nasty. So guys, that is infinite paths inside of Crucible. You can try it for yourself. There are definitely better options, not only within its own archetype, but especially amongst other archetypes of pulse rifles. Now let's talk about PVE. Despite what we're saying here, this may be a phenomenal weapon inside of PVE. And it's actually got some good perk combinations. I've got one with Dragonfly, which is always extremely nice. Throw on a Dragonfly spec too for that extra explosion power. It's not bad. And depending on what you're going against, you can actually combine this with something like Genesis that will help you out against shielded enemies. Now, me personally, I think Demolitionist is still the way to go, especially inside of PvE. Whether you're rocking a grenade build or not, it's still going to benefit you. Having your grenade available at all times is always a positive. But all the other perks, things like Eye of the Storm, Opening Shot, Shield Disorient, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that inside of PvE. And even something like Zim Moment, I don't even think you need that inside of PvE. For me, guys, I would honestly go the route out of something like Demolitionist and Dragonfly, or maybe even something like Demolitionist and Swashbuckler. You could go the route of Grave Robber and Swashbuckler. Treat this almost like a pseudo SMG, but with some range, and it's a burst fire. Very awkward. Things are getting a little strange here. You're running around pushing aggressively with a pulse rifle, rocking Grave Robber and Swashbuckler. I don't know. It just doesn't sound right, right? I think that it sounds wrong, but you could rock that. That is definitely an option. Other than that, was it impressive inside of PvE? It wasn't bad. It's definitely not the best though. Like when I talk about pulse rifles, that are very dominant inside of PvE. We recently reviewed Chattering Bone again. Now, there was a couple of reasons why we reviewed it. A big reason why we did, though, was because of the sandbox and our artifact mods. But my Chattering Bone right here is fantastic. It has damage dealing perks like Rampage, Outlaw. I even got Ricochet rounds on it, even though I don't really need it. And this Pulse Rifle puts in work. The biggest disappointment about Infinite Pass is that it doesn't really have any major damage dealing perks other than maybe Swashbuckler. And I'm not saying Swashbuckler is not bad, but I would have definitely loved to have seen a multi-kill clip feeding frenzy roll on this pulse pulse rifle feels good and that's one that you could say about infinite pass it's a good feeling pulse it sounds good it looks good it feels right in your hands but it's missing that level of lethality that we've seen from other weapons especially pulse rifles that is present in its own archetype what i was hoping from this lightweight pulse rifle being as we have not had many new additions to this archetype was for more variety in our perks here that could have potentially elevated infinite pass maybe not pass some of our top tier pulse rifles but at least on par so guys that is our review here for this pulse let me know in the comments below what you think definitely not trying to tear this gun down or take away from what it presents if you're looking for a stable consistent pulse rifle especially in that 34 to 35 meter range this is still a great pulse rifle to use However, there are many other pulse rifles that will outrange it, outduel it, and mathematically are superior. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.
Thank you.